Ready? Today on Garden Fork, we are going to replace the disc brake pads and rotors on our Dodge Caravan. Um, this is the kind of repair that despite how electronic cars are these days, that you can probably do yourself. I mean, it's easy enough to take it to the shop and drop it off and have them do it. But if you're the least bit handy and you have some tools, you can do it. So why don't you watch us and we'll show you. So you know it's a sign that you need new brakes when your uh, brake pads look like this. These are what new brake pads look like. These are the old brake pads. This is a brand new brake rotor here. This is from the brake pad rubbing into the rotor. Before you jack up the car, you have to loosen the lug nuts on the tires, because if you jack up this tire and then try and take off the lug nuts, the tire is just going to spin. So you're using the weight of the car to hold this tire down. So we're just going to loosen each lug nut, and then we'll jack open the car. Big lug. Am I a big lug? <laughs> if your uh, car has been repaired by a shop and they've tightened the lug nuts too tight, you might be in trouble. This is called a star wheel or a star wrench. It works really well for getting your lug nuts off. Now, when you want to jack up your car, you first have to chalk the opposite wheels of the wheel that you're going to jack up. So I've got just two pieces of 4x4. Four four. You go in the front and the back of the tire. Can you make some car talk sounds? Nuck, 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 nuck. <laughs> this is a this is a, called a floor jack or a garage jack. You can also use what's called a bottle jack. Do not use the jack that came with your car to change the spare tire. Why? Um, I don't trust them. That's just basically Eric. But what we're going to do is we're going to find the jack point underneath here and we're going to put uh, this right underneath that and jack up the car. You just want the tire to come off the ground, not really any farther. I wonder what the puppy's doing. She loves the car. After you've got this jacked up to a height you want, you have to put these in. These are called jack stands. This is a safety precaution. So what I do is I slip this under right next to the jack on a piece of the frame. Then what I do is I allow the jack down a little bit and the weight of the car sits on this jack stand because you don't want this floor jack to hold up the weight of the car for any length of time because if it goes, it'll fall on you. And that's a, that's a bad thing. If it goes, you go. If this goes, I go. And it sits just like that. I'm such a girl. You are a girl. <laughs> now the beauty of a star wheel like this is you just put it on here and you spin. And you look like an expert. Are you seeing that beauty? You want to save these and put them in a safe place. What is that? That's a lug nut. That comes off just like that. It's very nice. Nice. Oh, product placement. Maybe Fresca could sponsor our show. <laughs> this is the brake rotor. This is a brake caliper. Wait, wait, where's the caliper? This is the caliper, this whole unit here. For the whole thing? Right. And then this is the brake pads. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take off the caliper, pull off the pads, pull off the rotor, and then put a new rotor on, put new pads in the caliper, and put the caliper back in. There are two bolts that hold this caliper on. Let's see, left. Lefty that's, Lucy. That's set to tighten, so. You want to have a piece of coat hanger wire or like a piece of copper wire handy because when you take this caliper off, you do not want it to hang by the hydraulic hose. This is the brake line hose here. So to get this caliper off, you have to press the piston in just a little bit. So I'm going to pull the caliper across a little bit and you see I have some wiggle room here. This is your brake caliper here. Be very careful with it. Don't twist it around a lot because this brake line here, you don't want to break that brake line. You Here's should. your brake pad. Uh -huh. Here's the brake piston. Here's What's the piston, that round thing? That round thing here. It's kind of hard to see. Here's your brake piston. Here's the seal for the piston. And this is the caliper body back here. What kind of screwdriver? A regular, regular screwdriver will work. What we call a, a BFS in the trade pops out like that. So that just hangs, so the weight is not on the hydraulic line. Rotor comes right off. 
Now, this is a perfect world scenario where the rotor comes right off. If they don't come off easily, if they're on here and they're stuck, Pull. what you can do is you can take a hammer with a block of wood, or you can take a rubber mallet and tap the back and loosen them up. That looks real shiny still. It's really shiny because the brake pads rub against them constantly. Basically, what, what makes your car stop is this pad presses against this metal here. Where'd you get that rotor? I got this at the auto parts store. Make sure that it doesn't have any grease or oil on it. Keep this clean before you put it on. So that goes on. The little clips go on. I wonder where the puppy is. We have an audience. Yes. So I forgot to do this before, but um, these latex gloves they sell at the store are really handy to put on because they keep your hands from looking, looking like, like that. that. Okay, gloves are on. Let's go back to work. This is our caliper, and we want to put new pads in here. But first, we have to press this piston back in because the piston is protruding out because of all the wear on the old pads. And we have new pads now, so they won't fit in with that piston out like that. So I have a piece of scrap wood here, and we lay in this clamp, slowly press the piston back in. You also, you want to inspect the caliper. If you see any leakage, any brake fluid coming out, anything like that, that's a bad sign. We're gonna put in our new brake shoes. You've, of course, you've paid attention to how they came out in the first place. So these slide right on. So these go in. You might have to move it back and forth a little bit. Remember, lefty loosey. Righty tighty. Righty tighty. This is the hardest part, getting the wheel back on. Just lining up the lugs. You want to tighten these in a cross hatch pattern. So you want to go opposite sides. Cross, cross, cross. In other words, don't tighten this one and then the next one. Fire comes down. This is a 3 8 ratcheting torque wrench. They're relatively inexpensive. I think I got this for $30. It's not the highest quality. But, you know, I don't use it every day like a regular mechanic, so I don't need the super expensive kind. These lug nuts get torqued to 90 pounds. So when it clicks like that, that means it's hit the torque setting you've set. And we're set. It's time to go to the barn. So here we are at the barn. Always close the barn door. Hey, buddy. This is my racehorse. So that's basically an overview of how to replace the brake pads and rotors on your car or truck. Uh, you should really check the manual, buy a book on a how-to. This is just kind of an overview. There might be a couple of safety things that we missed that could be very important. So don't follow exactly what I did, but kind of enjoy it for the humor of Eric and uh, this picture of the horses behind here. Um, but it is easy and it's not too hard. You got to be safe. Make sure the wheels are chocked. Make sure you use jack stands. Don't use a cheap jack. Okay, more on cash in later episodes. Thank you for watching. I have no food, okay?